morning. This is the February 21st, 2024 meeting of the Western Region Board of Review. The time is 9 o'clock and the hearing is officially open. The members of the board to my left are David Flynn, to my extreme right, Richard Andrews, to his left, John Shetty, to my right is Peter Clayman. My name is John Lydon. and I'm the chairman from the Department of State and Andy Bizdak is at the other corner of the table representing the Department of State. We will now hear the scheduled petitions. When you speak, please address the board and give your name, title, and legal address so that our court reporter can have all the information requested. We may have to stop from time to time to consult with our technical staff. And making comments to the board, please provide a descriptive narrative on the matters referring to your exhibits to enable the court reporter to enter these into the record. The first hearing today is the matter of petition number 2024. 0047, the petitioner is Avalon Development. At this point, you may come forward and present your case. No, not yet. Hold on. This petition requests a variance regarding the alterations and change of occupancy. This right. Change of occupancy to an existing building. The application is for a type 3B of group R2 slash B occupancy. The building consists of five stories and has a gross area of approximately 22,960 square feet. The building is located at 185 Grant Street, City of Buffalo County of Erie, State of New York. Petitioner seeks relief from 19 NYCRR 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, with section 705.8 regarding openings. And it states, openings and exterior walls shall comply with section 705.8.1 through 705.8.6. Section 705.8.1 reads the allowable area of openings, and it states the maximum area of unprotected and protected openings permitted in an exterior wall in any story of the building shall not exceed the percentages specified in table 705.8 based on the fire separation distance of each individual story. Petitioner requests relief from the allowable provision of table 705.8. Also, section 19 NYCRR 1220, the 2020 Building Code of New York State section or the fire code, section 1204.2.2, which is for exterior openings and it reads exterior openings required by section 1204.2 for natural light shall open directly into a public way, yard or court as set forth in section 1205. Exceptions, required exterior openings are permitted to open into a roof porch where the porch meets all of the following criteria. 1.1, abuts a public way yard or court. 1.2, has a ceiling height of not less than seven feet. 1.3, has a longer side, at least 65% open and unobstructed. And number two, skylights are not required open directly onto the public way yard or court. Petitioner requests relief from opening directly onto a public way yard or court as set forth in 12, section 1205. So at this point, you may present your case. Good morning. My name is Kathy Kinnan. I'm the architect representing Avalon Development. And Chris Jacobs is here this morning to watch the proceedings. Contribute. Contribute if there's anything that I'm missing. Um, John, you pretty much covered it. Uh, we have a building, a five story building on Bill Street. Um, how much of this do you want me to repeat? Whatever you feel is best for presentation purposes to make your case. Okay, uh, it's a, it's a five story building on Grand Street. It was built at the turn of the last century as a five story warehouse. And interestingly enough, it's been used as such until just a couple of years ago when the owner died. And the, I believe it's the last uh, vestige of vertical warehousing in the city used as such until just a couple of years ago. Uh, and, it, and so the second, third, fourth, and fifth floors are our warehouse. And half of the first floor was a retail uh, establishment until just a couple of years ago when we were died. So uh, Avalon Development has an option to purchase this property and would like to develop it for residential use. He looked at commercial, but commercial is not needed in this area, residential of this. And the, the, north, the north wall of the property, it, well, both the north and the south wall are on the property lines. So putting windows in it was, a, was an issue. 
So the first thing that that Avalon did was reach out to both of the neighbors and ask for um, either to buy some of the property or a, uh, an easement. And neither one of the uh, neighbors uh, was willing to do that. Uh, there's a building, as you can see on the site plan, there's a building immediately to the north. To the south, um, there's a single story building that's about 18 feet away. So the logical place to to try to put some windows would be on the south side, partially for the southern orientation, and also because there's the, uh, the next closest building is 18 feet away. But obviously, there's a problem with putting openings in a party wall, as you know. Thus, we're here for this variance. Um, so, the, so knowing that we would need a variance, the very first thing I did before I filed for the variance was going to City Hall to talk to Plan Review and the Fire Department, knowing that their their uh, opinions and would have a lot to do with what the result it will be today. Uh, the Fire Department did not show up to the meeting. The uh, Plan Review. Uh, it was Mike Piccolo specifically. Uh, we discussed um, uh, the building will be sprinklered and putting deluge, deluge heads on both sides of the windows, and that's how the variance was uh, uh, submitted. Um, last week, I was able to talk to uh, uh, Mark Morganti about additional information, and we discussed glass block, uh, rated windows, and fire shutters. And I did a little bit of research, um, which is not part of this variance, but I have, I think, have some information I can pass around. The glass block, although the internet says it can be rated up to 120 minutes, the product literature only says 90 minutes. And glass block's not a viable, so marketable solution for residential. Um, let's see. Rated windows. <clears throat> Getting an ex uh, cost for getting information about rated windows was difficult. Uh, uh, I talked to weather panel. They, they don't. Everything has to be fabricated. So then I talked to Sterling glass. Uh, they have to purchase fire rated steel and fire resistant glass. And it was and they told me that 60 and uh, product literature goes up to a couple hours with fire resistant glass only goes up to. 90, 90 minutes, if I recall. Anyway, they told me that 60 minute glass is so expensive, it's costed by the square inch. And I wasn't able to get cost estimates um, immediately or in time. However, Pete Telke was, was, Telke was kind enough to share his information. He'll, he'll be talking to you for the next variance. Uh, he did was able to get a cost estimate from Sterling Glass earlier in the month, and I was able to interpolate the cost of 60 minute rated glass, uh, which is $978 a square foot for about $14,000 a window. And we would need 40 windows uh, to an expense of like $560,000 for windows, which is more than the, the cost of the building. Um, regular windows that would pass ship road review would be about a thousand dollars a piece. So we're we're talking about forty thousand dollars expense versus five hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars. I have this information. Do you want me to do you want to see it? I mean this is regarding window costs, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah you might as well pass it around and let people spend as much time as they would like on it. Okay. That's this is for the rated block. So the last, so the last thing, uh, and again, those those expenses are only for um, uh, uh, a one hour. So we still have an issue. The last thing that I investigated that, that Mark and I talked about were, were fire shutters. Um, we can, in fact, buy a three-hour fire shutter, and they are about um, eight thousand dollars a piece um, without tax. I figured at about eleven thousand dollars each for installation. We're talking four hundred and forty thousand dollars for fire shutters for forty windows. So, um, so I, the, the intent of coming in today was to get some guidance as to what what would be possible, uh, so that 
Avalon can purchase this building and develop it, which I personally think I, I have a vested interest. I have an office on Brant Street. I love Brant Street. This the the vacancy of this building's been a blow to Brant Street, and developing it would be a good thing. And you know, we 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 also discuss things like can I carve a well out of the interior of it to get the light that I need? And the footprint is so small; it's only about forty six hundred square feet. And it's a long linear building, and the layout of the apartments would be such that trying to cut wells into it to get light, we would lose too much square footage. And then the only the last the last thing that I uh, wanted to mention was um, well anyway I was just looking for input. Um, Ricky Andrews speaking. A um, couple of questions, quick. Um, you mentioned uh, deluge system inside and outside the window. Did you say? Did you say? I, I did. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's my understanding. But the, 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 the heads are like but both sides. Outside the windows, also. Well, whatever the standard is. Well, the standards for normal, and they've taken it out of the code as an option, but the older code used to be able to put for a rated door, rated window, you could put a, a sprinkler head on either side, but that was in the interior. There wasn't an exterior window. Um, I was just curious when you said that, if that's what you meant or if you just misspoke. I could misspeak because I'm not an expert on these things. And then I, I don't know anything about the zoning in the city, but so conceivably the neighbor could build a building exactly on that lot line, which would block all your windows right out. Avalon is aware of that and they're willing to take the, the chance, but there's, there's something, there's a, the, the reason, the other thing too, that, that we have here is I have a copy of, let me see if I'm organized. A copy of a of a letter uh, written by Hamilton House and Lowney in 2014. I don't have a copy of the variance, but I do have a copy of the letter. It was for 686 Main Street. Uh, it was an identical situation uh, where there were windows on the property line that they wanted to put in for residential, and they wrote a, a letter to Kumar saying that if the if the neighbor wanted to develop the property, then at that time, they would either remove the windows or protect them with 90 minute openings um, for two hour rated infill construction. Um, and we were hoping that that would be a viable concession. So, we're willing to do something. Yeah, yes. The owner is willing, to, after we deliberate, the owner is willing to pursue that same. Type of legal document that states if it does go up, we're going to do the following. Yes, yes. Or, yeah, you want to come forward at this point? So come forward, yeah. Yeah. identify yeah. yourself, and yeah. so on the record. Uh, Chris uh, G. goes to Avalon Development. Um, the building is, you know, is 35 by 170, and as uh, Kathy had mentioned a couple years ago, it was for storage. Um, the only way this building becomes viable again if there's windows. Otherwise, you have the gorgeous building with windows on grant and nothing all the way down. Uh, so even if it was a commercial use, I think that the need would be, which is uh, the market doesn't. But uh, to your point, 686 Main Street, which I'm part owner of, uh, we had a similar situation. There's a parking lot next door, um, and we, uh, we we made an agreement that if in fact the owner had no problem with us. Doing the work, but did want, not want it was Mark Coach. He did not want to give an easement. Uh, so we said, okay, it, it, it's okay. Uh, we we will put the windows in and take the risk that um, that one day a building was up. Much more risky there than on Grand Street. Next door is the Seven uh, Eleven, uh, and as Kathy mentioned, it's about twenty feet away from the building, set back about hundred feet off Grand. Um, I talked at length with the owners. I. I was frankly surprised they wouldn't give a five foot one inch of easement because there's nothing there and wouldn't impede their operation. Um, but they didn't want to uh, upset the apple cart with uh, 7-Eleven, who I talked to in, uh, out of Texas. They didn't have a problem with 
I could not get a new one. So uh, they they're about to sign a new 15 year lease with 7-Eleven. So I'm you know I'm willing to take the risk because I, I just think it's going to remain what it is. It's a very viable operation. It's open 20, 24 hours. It's it's not going anywhere. Um, and if if the day comes uh, that that changes, um, you know my belief if that ever happened, somebody's going to put a building on and want a gap of space, so they have went there. So, but so but of course there there is that risk. But uh, I, I'm willing to do it and put any promise uh, here to you or encumbrance on the deed or whatever you would want to do. Thank you. Oh, we've got an attorney on the board. You want to speak up regarding that type of action? Yeah, no, I mean, you can, you can certainly put a, a, a deed notice or a deed prescription on your own property that would require that. Uh, I'm sorry, who's so speaking? You said the, the attorney, who, what was his, his name? I'm sorry. Thank you. So I apologize. Did you say something about the city? Did you stop? Yeah, I mean, it would require if somebody came through uh, 12 weeks from now and decided to put up a fence for the building of 7 Eleven is located, it would require the city to say, okay, but there's this obligation to either put players shutter down. Or, you know, and the reality is it would become uh, a vacant building anyway because the tenants would all leave before they left the fence. So uh, the market would speak on that. Uh, Peter Cunningham, a uh, couple questions. Uh, to my best understanding of, uh, of the, uh, the annotated survey, your plan is to take in the red outline as the new parcel? Correct. Your long term business plan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this, yeah, is, a, this yeah, is a parking yeah. lot off the side street of Auburn. Understood. Understood. Uh, so then, as a practical matter, I'm curious why you need the variance all the way to the back. Is that just a? Uh, no, it's not all the way to the back. Uh, no, no, it's, 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 you need the variance it's, only along the uh, front. Correct. If correct. you look at page three, yeah. no, no. Uh, it, the, the issue is more about the overall our overall understanding of development right. plans and uh, the the uh, 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 how. Uh, as much as it's not an issue, uh, the, the matter can specifically, but you only have firefighter access to the uh, branch street and firefighter access to the rear and of course on the side, but you control the potential, potential ownership of the property. So that I was we were just I was just interested in being that in that point. And as as long as the uh, obviously with the interest, as long as you're Business plan is to take on the red outline as a per property purchase. That gives us a basis to understand your uh, business model. Does it work? Because you actually don't own the property for good reason. And then, uh, 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 I guess this this is a, a kind of a, a question that's going on Kathy's lap. Uh, you would you feel comfortable coming up with um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, mechanical ventilation if if indeed this thing happens and someone cuts off the windows? Of course, yeah. but that's what I thought. But I have to ask. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Your audio is is going in and out. Your report is having a hard time hearing you guys. Okay, uh, all I could ask is if everybody could speak up. Speak up, speak clearly, um, slow it down a little bit, and, and and identify yourself before you talk, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Uh, John Leiden, um, so I know you talked with Chief Mordani, and did he look at the site plan also to talk about Firefighting tactics and accessibility, or was it strictly about the windows? Strictly about the windows. So, is this board safe to assume that you will satisfy the firefighting access requirements of the New York State Building Code moving forward? Yes. And off the top of your head, do you know how what those issues are? And how are you going to deal with them or not? No. 
Rick, do you want to talk about the site plan relative to the firefighting tactics and accessibility? Of um, you know, if he hasn't raised any, has he raised any issues? No. Well, he hasn't seen, he's talked about windows. He hasn't talked about firefighting access to 150 miles. Well, I mean, he had to review it. I believe there's people here from the city. Maybe we could hear from them. Oh, yeah, we don't have Mark. But well, yeah, we got we got fire fire. Yeah, somebody might, might prevention. The Scat Braver uh, Fire. I'm here representing uh, Chief Morgani's on vacation, uh, and I'll be brief. I just have his little notes here since I'm not too familiar with the plan review. Has, has there has there been something submitted to Chief Morgani? This presentation, yeah. Okay. But no permit has been issued at all or anything no, like that. No. Okay. That's my understanding. Well, this is Kathy Command speaking. We're still in the planning stages and this okay. is the first step. It's my understanding that uh, your client doesn't own the building yet. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> um, so from Chief Morgani, uh, and I'll just be brief here. If he puts a wall and a fire door inside of the stairwell, open it and shorten the corridor so the apartments have two exits out. Without using the main, without using that corridor. Sorry. Yeah, those are all can't even issues. I'm sorry, all the problem. <laughs> uh, second. Second. This is an easement for a property he doesn't even own, and the owner is unable to obtain an easement from the adjacent property owner, which is already stated. Uh, he uh, suggests putting fire shutters in all the windows or doing uh, half the amount of windows, about 20 openings. You know, cut your openings down, uh, make the opening a little bigger uh, with a three hour rating, the property line. Uh, it's not 100% code compliant because they're not supposed to be openings, they're supposed to be closed. So um, he's against any of any of the openings. Any opening should have a fire shutter. If they keep 40 openings, then they should have 40 fire shutters. Uh, the chief also suggested figuring out a way to reduce those openings to half. <clears throat> um, if a variance is, is granted, uh, he would definitely want it to be stated that the windows will be shut. Um, sorry, here, bear with me. Chief Morgani is not in agreement with washing the windows. Uh, he also he suggested putting a 45 minute fire rated glass, put in a deluge sprinkler, which is an hour, and give a UL listing. If they do fire rated glass with a deluge sprinkler, we would at least like a UL listing on that glass. Um, Currently, there's no listing for what's been submitted. The windows need to be in operable. They can't open, et cetera, et cetera. All these set up. Have you got a fire putter access at all? So, Cody, you got to come forward and go on record. Uh, Cody Osborne, I, I'm just saying because you guys asked us your opinion on firefighter access. So, their plan. Right there, uh, I know this is kind of the first time we're talking about it, but do you see any issues with fighting a fire for this building? Here's the building, and you can get here's the new parcel of buildings. I mean, there would be aerial access to the Rick Andrew speaking. How uh, there would require aerial access, which you'd have at the front. If yes. there's no wires, I don't believe there's right. any wires across the front. Oh, we should have two sides. Right, right. And then I, I'm not sure what's at the rear of this. I can't. It's, it's, clear. Yeah. it's clear. You can't really see that. So is, it, is it your property, though? Yes. Okay. So, so it, does, it doesn't count that there's a parking lot next door that's not behind it? No, that doesn't. Yeah, you can't take that into consideration because it's if they could build a building on it. And there could be a whole bunch of cars yeah, in the parking lot. Yeah, it could be anything to obstruct the fire. We could be able to access it. You have no control over that. That's the problem. Yeah. So, uh, with the uh, variance that's before us, and when we rule, 
we would rule that obviously moving forward the building permit satisfies the fire code of New York State regarding right. accessibility for firefighting, etc. So you might get this, you might or might not get this window thing variance, but you might find out like, oh, that's not great. Firefighters aren't happy with the access or I don't know. And the layout of the building for that matter. You know, the layout of the building might be something that come back for a variance, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, know all, your, all, your, all before us is the windows. Mm -hmm. Everything inside, up to code. Sure, and sure. I mean, this isn't complete gut rehab. So. Okay, so you should be fine with it. So, Neil, so you might want to do a little more legwork moving forward to ensure that this doesn't yep. fight or fight any tactics, doesn't no, have stop you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael, we're here first because some of these suggestions here would be on the windows, so cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for that very reason, I wouldn't buy a building that what we're talking about is more than the price of the building. So both Cody and the captain realize uh, the presentation today covers a legal statement document that states when and if you're getting, you're getting your windows. When and if those windows get closed up, they're willing to take the next step regarding or whatever it takes to to satisfy the work of the window. Yeah. Or receive the windows. Yeah. 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 And fill the windows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is Cody Osborne again. I just had a question. When you're looking at the plan that shows your stairwells in there, are those going to sit out under the do those have an exit that are out on somebody else's property? No. no. Okay. No, they would no. be, I mean, we're still working through that, but they would exit one out on the Grand Street and one in the back. Okay. I might. That was just one of my yeah. concerns. Yeah. Because I see the, the, the two right here on the property. Yeah, no, those, so those, sure those, are, the, yeah, those are existing, right? Uh, it, um, one of them is, but the, we, we're, it hasn't been designed yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then obviously one of our worries is like you stated with just somebody building next to you. So we've already addressed that. Uh, but I, I don't I don't want you to do a code review standing here now. No, no, no. So no, I just saw that those stairs. Okay. Right. So, so, that yeah. so I want yep. um, then I, I want a big picture of they're gonna meet the code, they're gonna sit down with you, you're gonna talk about all things you're already talking about. I don't think I want to be part of this hearing right. because it's not you're not sitting down with a book in front of you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So we don't want we don't want this no. conversation here. Abish? Yeah, I, I think the estimate could have helped us in any projects going forward prior to us being here. The yeah. estimates always help us. So when we get them at the last second, that's, that doesn't really favor anything. Great. Uh, this is Captain yeah. Graver. I just have one question. I believe it might be a legal question. Um, is if the windows were to be in fill and it was all legally done paperwork and that, is that? Also binding on the deed for the next element. It would be on the deed notice, so it would run with the land. Okay. So, so whoever owned the property would be subject to that restriction, not just the current owner. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I've got a question. Yeah, this is John Shenny. Uh, have you talked to any structural engineers about putting this many openings in a hundred year old brick wall? You're required to comply with. Uh, seismic um, design for this building you're doing a level three alteration are you sure you can cut this many openings in the wall and not have this building fall down with a minor earthquake no i think that'd be a real important yes. step before we, you get into this very deep because we did have a structural engineer go through and take a look at uh the condition of it and everything was fine but i did not ask that specific question okay so, John, based on your experience, this looks like it should be a very strong consideration by them. It would be very strong consideration, and to get around that with building seismic restraints in here would be expensive enough. It would probably kill your project. Well, if you allow us to do the windows, that'll be the next question that we ask. What do you that you ask who? Restructure, I restrict the structural. Oh, engineer. okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, when we rule, obviously, once again, it's contingent upon everything else meeting the code, like structural engineering. Correct, correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. 
I mean, we don't have a floor plan yet. Uh, I just did something really quick to say this is the amount of windows that we would want if we could put five units in a row with a single other corridor. But yes, thank you. Uh, anything else from the board? Because we've jumped around a lot, I would appreciate if you could give a summary of brief summary best you can to the issues at hand and what we're talking about. They did that once. Yeah, I guess I guess just simply requesting a summary, brief summary. Uh, this is Kathy Canan speaking, and we are requesting that you allow us to put windows um, in a party wall on the south side of the building, as configured in this drawing, uh, with the provision that the request is to put in regular glass. Sprinklered off of the sprinkler system that'll go into the building when we develop it, and uh, with the provision that if the neighbor builds uh, a building next to this, that will provide fire shutters. Is it fire shutters or like block it up? Or block it up. Block up the windows or fire shutters. Okay, and I, and, and regarding what if that happens when you block it up at that point, artificial light, artificial ventilation needs to be brought in. Correct. Okay. All right, I think that's a good summary. Um, anything else? So, I, I mean, I was under the assumption these were existing. We, we, no, no, that, no, okay. no. Okay, that's so, all. That's, yeah, no, okay, good. no windows at all. That's what brings up John's issue. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I just, the, the look, way it looks, it looks like they were existing. <laughs> we tried. It's a good rendering. Yeah, it is. Well, actually, yeah, and the one reason we uh, don't have any windows in this front section is uh, we ran a preliminary. Uh, um, I'm going to hopefully do historic tax credits on this, and uh, state historic preservation said they wanted to preserve this portion and uh, this this can't add that you know maybe restore that. So that's one reason why we step it back before we start windows. Yeah. And uh, I have one other question. You, you mentioned quotes, but your quotes were for 60 minute and what, been 90 minute? Yeah, I, um, the quote for the glass, uh, the, which would cost $560,000, is for just 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minute rating. Um, the chief mentioned 45 minutes. So I didn't know if you were going to get that. Uh, well, glass. that was all I could get. And so, so what I wanted to take away from today's meeting was a read on what you allow us to do. Um, but he was discussing, I mean, 45 minutes in a, in a, in a wall that's not supposed to have any openings. Right. Where, where's, you know. 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we still need a variance for something. Right, 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 right. 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 That's true. And it's the same thing with, so the only thing that, 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 uh, that would satisfy this, uh, would, would have been the three hour shutters. And again, it, it's a $450,000 proposition uh, that Avalon would be willing to do if if, the, if if it was jeopardizing something next door, which right now it's not. The windows would not be jeopardizing anything on the okay. south side. But if it were to. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the board? Anybody in the audience like to come forward on this particular topic? Anybody? Okay, so at this point, we'll ask you folks to head out to the corridor while we deliberate. Everybody's got to go out, not just the We shall now reconvene petition number 2024-0047-185 Grant Street. Based upon the evidence and documentation presented, the board makes the following findings. Number one, 185 Grant Street is a five-story brick and heavy timber building dating back to the 19s. It was designed, constructed, and used primarily for food storage until just recently. Part of the first floor was used as a retail store. It is the last model of vertical food storage warehousing in the city, and the obsolescence of its original function has contributed to its difficulty to reuse the structures as it was intended. It is an oblong building whose dimensions are 30 feet wide by 130 feet long with window openings in the 30 foot wide facade only. 
all of the northern wall and three quarters of the southern wall sit on the property lines and are without windows. See the closed survey and photos, exhibits B and C. Number two, Avalon Development would like to develop this building for residential use on floors two through five. The first floor will remain commercial office and retail. Avalon would like to place windows on floors two through five in the configuration indicated in exhibit D. No new window openings are planned for the northern facade. Avalon has requested an easement of both the north and south adjacent property owners and both have refused. Thus, pursuit of this variance. Number three, the building will be fully sprinklered as per building code section 903.3.1.1 and FBA 13 sprinkler systems. All new windows will be high quality double hung aluminum clad dual pane suitable for approval by SHPO. The windows will be protected by NFPA 753.3.26.1 deluge water mist system. The system will be designed by a licensed fire suppression professional. Number four, without the relief of this variance, the upper floors cannot be used for residential occupancy. Other economic models involving commercial usage were studied but the combination of market glut, building configuration, and lack of natural light make commercial marketability prohibitively difficult. Number five, a variance is being sought for the New York State Building Code Sections BC 705.8 openings, Table 705.8 fire separations, zero to three feet. Window openings are not permitted if the distance to the lot line is less than three feet. Building code 706.8 openings. The exception number one reads openings are not permitted in party walls. Building code section 1204.2.2 exterior openings. Exterior openings must open onto a public way, yard, or court. Number six, the adjacent building to the south is 18 feet away. Number seven, building code sections 1202 and 1204 allow for mechanical ventilation and artificial lighting as a substitute for natural ventilation and lighting, but we strongly believe that the intent of the code is to provide at least natural light and habitable space. Additionally, the petitioner believes that apartments with no windows would not be marketable. Number eight, the adjacent property owners are not willing to sell portions of their property or provide easements. Um, I'm going to have David Flynn read number nine. David. Uh, David Flynn speaking. Number nine, the applicant will, if it acquires the property, put a legally enforceable, uh, enforceable deed restriction on the property requiring window removal or shuttering on the south side, all in compliance with applicable code provisions, should there be development on the adjacent parcel within 10 feet of the lot line. Number 10, this variance is for windows only. All other building code issues shall be satisfied moving forward with the building permit process. Do I have a motion? I'll move. David Flynn moves. Do I have a second? Jack Shenny second. At this point, we'll vote. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Shenny? Yes. Mr. Clayman? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. John Leiden is also approval approved. The uh, vote carries uh, by a vote of five to zero. In accordance with the above findings, strict compliance with the provisions of the Uniform Fire Prevention Code would entail practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship and would be unnecessary in light of the alternatives which achieve the intended objective of the code more efficiently, effectively, or economically. And granting the variance would not substantially adversely affect the code's provisions for health, safety, and security. Per the uh, direction of uh, the state of Albany, uh, the Department of State is authorized to sign and deliver on behalf of the Department of State the following. The State Environmental Quality Review Act Short Environmental Assessment Form indicating that no or small impact may occur in response to each question in part two of the form and determining in part three of the form that the proposed action will not result in any significant adverse environmental impact. New York State Department of State Coastal Management Program, Coastal Assessment Form, and a Certificate of No Significance to a Coastal Impact. 
This decision is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. The hearing is now concluded. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gary. Anybody need a break? Good. Um, unfortunately, uh, Peter Clayman, I have to recuse myself. I uh, attended in my previous job. Uh, preliminary and plenary meetings on the, on the matter on which the answer. Chelsea, did you get that? Chelsea. Uh, oh, hello? Hi, yeah. Chelsea. Did you get the last comment by Peter Clayman? Uh, this is I'm Peter, sorry, no. Go ahead. This is Peter Clayman talking. I, in my previous employment with the city of Buffalo, had uh, worked on some of the preliminary plan review meetings in association with uh, the Louisiana street matter that's in front of us. And so I am stepping out of the office or stepping out of the, the uh, meeting. I recuse myself. Thank you. We will now. Are you ready, Chelsea? Hello, Chelsea. Yes. Hello, Chelsea. Are you ready? Yes, to I'm here. Okay, we're going to reconvene. Okay. The next hearing is petitioner number 2023-0348, petitioners Frisland Group Architects. <laughs> Nature of grievance and relief sought. The petition requests a variance regarding alterations and change of occupancy to an existing building. This application is for a building type 3B of group A2, B3, R2, and B and S2. The building consists of five stories and has a gross area of approximately 93,165 square feet. The building is located at 225 Louisiana Street, City of Buffalo County, Erie, State of New York. Petitioner seeks relief from 19 NYCRR 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Fire Code Section 716.1.2, regarding glazing. Glazing used in fire door assemblies and fire window assemblies shall comply with this section in addition to the requirements of Section 716.2 and 716.3, respectively. Petitioner requests relief from the requirements and they will provide deluge sprinklers at the glazing. At this point, you may present your case. Yeah, um, this is Peter Talty speaking. I live at 205 Sprucewood Terrace. I'm representing um, uh, person group architects. I worked on this project. Um, just a little bit of information. This is a manufacturing building, rather large, and it was not just one building, but it was built up over time. You know, anywhere between 10 and 12 rooms, depending on how you count them. And they all have different styles with them. What's interesting about this is there was an alley that ran parallel to Louisiana, all the way down the length of these buildings. It was covered over. When we went in there to do the conversion, we added skylights throughout that. We wanted to bring daylight back into what was previously an alley. We actually added living walls underneath each of these skylights. We wanted this, we wanted to bring that blue, that inside outside. And a lot of the tenants, the commercial tenants, looked into this space. We wanted them to have glass 
that would be looking out and seeing data on him, seeing growing things. Um, which is why we're requesting this variance. Um, looking at the cost of the glass to put him in, we have four spots we've identified where we want to um, in place of using the fire rated glass, we'd like to use a daily sprinkler head system. And so um, there's is a substitution allowed in the code within an atrium where you would, in place of having a one hour fire separation, you would have glass and a daily sprinkler head every six feet spaced um, throughout the length of the glass. We would like to use that substitution in this instance, the one hour rated partitions having the daily sprinkler head throughout that. Um, and just the, I can quote the section of it, uh, it's in the uh, atrium. Wrote it down here. New York State Building Code 8671C, the atrium partition substitution. We looked into the cost of the fire glass to do this, and there's four spaces we've identified. Do you want to show us where, yes. where we're talking about? Yes. What are you talking about? This is what I'm referring to as Louisiana Street is out here. This here is the alley that runs the entire length of the building. We have seven skylights. We have living walls throughout there. We have a tenant here that has glass into this hallway. We have a commercial space here with glass. We'd like to put into the hallway here. The space here. Their entrance is here. We'd like to use a storefront type setup here. And then down there, these are all indicated the clouded areas here for where we'd like to put the uh, storefront glass. And so the, stair the stairwell remake con continues with its reading. That is correct. Yes. So one, two, three, four. This here is just part of the hallway. We're not considering this a separate space, but these four areas. So it's really four doors we're talking about. We look at the cost of this. We're looking at two hundred forty thousand dollars for four doors for four entrances. Um, and so what we are asking is to use that one hour substitution that's allowed in the atrium. We'd like to use that here, which I believe was previously allowed in the code had been taken out. Um, so that's why we're seeking this variance. Let me let me interrupt for just a yes. second. Um, Rick Andrews speaking. So um, just to so it's clear that these are doors that you're speaking of glass doors. What what width? What's the what's the actual size? There are sizes of these. I can read each. Just of the doors. There's no windows. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. There is glass around it. Door with the storefront around it. Door surrounding the storefront. So it's glass. All it's door and glass that is and, and glazing. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So this is Jack Shaggy. How much of this building is split for you? All of it. Fully sprinkled. Fully sprinkled. Fully sprinkled. So what the, what would the rating be required if you didn't have the windows? One hour. One hour. Yes. And why don't you talk about the additional uh, sprinkler protection? Did you mention additional sprinkler protection at these? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He did. Yes. Yeah, it would be as would be in the more to the eight, yeah. glass. Yes. The six foot on center. Yes. Both um, sides. Washing the window. Okay. Now, the only thing with that condition is I think they mentioned about the glazing having gasketed something about the gaskets also, right? And, it, it, yes, um, actually, I have which you wouldn't be able to do with the window, obviously, or the door, obviously. No, they would not. It's, it's um, I got a section here on uh, West Apple, uh, Automatic sprinklers. Distance 12 inches away, glass being tempered, being held in place with a gasketed system. That way you're yeah, maintaining yeah. smoke passage. So, so it's so what you're offering really isn't equal to the atrium condition. Because they're talking about tempered glass with gasketed material. This is Michael Masters, our article of Buffalo, also from BRD construction. And I think what we could do is provide a uh, Gasket system, like okay, the weather stripping system on the perimeter of the doors and at the bottom of it to provide that protection. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much some of what we were asking. Okay. These four locations would be just shy of $40 million for Essentially, it would make every tenant. Cost per hitter. As a developer, we couldn't afford to underwrite it and we can't afford to pass it on to a tenant. It just makes this, the space unviable. Yeah, this is one example of the cryotherapy, over the cryotherapy, which is the space here. 
the cost of that build out is $160,000. The cost of the glazing there ends up being $45,000. So it's almost 30% increase in the cost just for the door. Um, so we make, really, you're making it like a mall situation. Yes. Where the mall has the one hour rated. Yes. How, did you look into the mall condition? Yeah, I don't think we completely fit the mall condition. I wasn't sure if we could make that case here. So I, this seemed to be, there was precedent for using the data to the heads of the atrium situation also in a one hour rated mall. Right. So the heads would be on both sides of the yes. door. Yes. Okay. Um, that, what about the hallway? Ceiling, where what are we talking for ceiling? I think it's about 14 or 16 feet. Oh. So that might make it more difficult to bring that. Those those are supposed to be six foot on center, right at the glass, so they watch the glass. We were bringing that down so you have to have a soffit of some type. Yes, the, the, the walls in some cases are four or five by oh, thick, right. that sort of screen for measure right up there, keeping them for 12 inches as they need to be. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience who wants to speak on this issue? You guys want to conclude your presentation? Um, you can write a quick summary if you want. A quick summary is what we're asking to do is um, we're using a fire suppression strategy in a fire containment situation, um, which is which is one of the things that I think brought up is that there's a difference between fire suppression. And Fire spreading. And so sprinklers are typically a fire extinguishing, but in this case, there is an allowance for hazard historically to use it as a fire um, uh, spread. Okay. All right. Anybody else on the board? Anything else? Okay. At this time, Curry would get head out into the corridor. Oh, hold on. Oh, you do want to make a comment? Yes. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, my call. Uh, Captain Braver, Buffalo Fire, um, standing in for Chief Morgani. Uh, I have his thoughts on the project. And I quote, I would like to contest the variance request for 225 Louisiana to Barcelona. There are a few issues I have with the request. First, the request is incomplete. I have a third, uh, you have a $35 million project that I'm sure went way up during construction. The variance request to not rate portions of the main corridor of the building because of cost, this corridor is open to residents and commercial space and is used for exiting. It is required to be one hour and already received a reduction from two hours because the building is sprayer. The request is to not use fire rated glass as it costs too much, but nowhere do they show the cost difference for us to make an educated decision. The remedy is to use deluge sprinklers and wash standard glass, but lacks the information of what sprinkler head they will use. The glass to be used and the cost of this non-compliant method. Also, there are no rating for washing standard glass in a standard frame, or everyone will be using it. So the, so the state and compliant alternative is false. There are many options that are co compliant. They could use rated glass with sprinklers or shutters to get the one hour rating. Again, cost is the issue, but no estimate was submitted for co compliant options. Sprinklers are installed to control a fire. Firewalls and barriers' purpose are to stop spread for a certain amount of time. I would like to see the proper rating on the walls and openings as this is the main artery of this project and it serves R2, A2, M, and Bs. Respectfully, Chief Mark Morgani. Uh, I'm Cody Osborne, I'm building code specialist with City of Buffalo. So yeah, just again, we didn't receive any of the cost estimates prior to, obviously they have the information, so that would have helped us a little bit prior to being here. Um, and then just my only other concern is that I've seen renderings online of this kind of being like a ball down here. So if this is allowed to do these two or four openings, does that that allow them to continue to do this along the way if they start to split up these other commercial spots? Like I want that handled in this variance as well, because I feel like that would be coming next. Is that they do these four and then next year they want to do four more down the way. So just something to think about. So down the way they have to come before us again. Yeah. This doesn't okay. give them 
the ability to continue the same idea okay. throughout. Okay. Okay. There's a couple of things. You've granted the variance for this now, and no, if I apply to that, it's going to be you. Nope. Thank you. Nope. That's a good point. So I'd like you guys to talk about both of their sets of comments, react to them. And so we, we would have included this if we thought that we would be doing a full review. It looks as if this was going to be a routine, routine approval, so we didn't go through the process and once we realized that this is the best way that we thought this was going to be a routine variance. That we just said, yes, okay. yeah, in the past, that's how it was leading to, and then okay. we uh, got the code enforcement questionnaire and the fire official questionnaire came in, and they didn't. You know, they couldn't go as routine. It had to go to the board based on their objection. So was, it being was, was a chief's objection to the routine application or the for this application? Well, his code enforcement questionnaire, and you heard what he said, I think he opposes the variance. Yeah, but I'm just right? wondering if he gave all of those comments after he saw the routine variance application, or does he give those comments after this application, um, Cody, I think he was got either way. Yeah, yeah. it would have been better. Okay, he definitely did not feel like this was good. Okay, this is Ricky Andrews speaking. Um, so there's residential occupancies that that exit through this quarter as a second means of egress. Yes, there is. Yes. And um, is there any? Are there any fire doors in this corridor whatsoever? There's one. Yes. Where is that located? Right here. Right here being on the phone as well. Yeah, there's one here, there's one down here. Under here by the um, store stairs. By the stair there, okay. And where's the other one? Um just uh by the park by the end of the parking area. Way down here. Uh move your finger to your right. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh there. there, okay. And those are uh, fire rated doors with magnetic hole opens? That's correct. And so these four um, items that you're talking about, um, these four areas, what is the width? I think the chairman mentioned at 1.1 was 10, 10 foot wide. Yeah, give me the width. Uh, uh, 10, 14, 14, 10, 14, 14. And what else you got? And six. Yes. 14, 5, 10, 9, 14, 8, and 6, 4, correct. Okay. And would you be objectionable to, to maybe going 10 foot instead of 14 foot? Yeah, we could, but these are the actual door openers that are there, the historic openers that were in the buildings previously. Yeah. Anywhere we've closed an opening and we've recessed it, so you can still see, we can see the historic echo of where. The doors and windows for these, these openings are based on that. Um, would there are some of these oversized and you'd like to reduce the better us here? Yeah, that's pretty much what I was asking. I think they could be so reduce still have the uh, you know, have it read as if they were historical. Yeah. There's a little sure, yeah. and to address their request or their, their concern, um, you know. We don't want 50 more or 10, 10 more of these opening up because somebody else wants their somebody else wants the front of their. Yeah, this is when, when we're open. looking down this here. The, the, these were the large existing openings. We right. said we want to maintain this. This is showing where the opening was in the building 100 years ago, and that's why we chose. And these are the largest openings. There might be one or two more down the road, but I think these are the ones we've identified as we want to maintain these. These are historically significant. So, yeah, so it's about the historically significant size of the original openings. However, you're willing to modify that opening to make them smaller, to make them not as large and not as much of a quote, hazard. It's not a preference, but we wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and the corridor is smoke and heat detection. I'm sorry, what? Smoke and heat detection yeah. throughout the quarter. Yes. Audio visuals, pull stations. Yes. Okay. Anybody else in the audience on this issue? You guys want to conclude anything? Um, 
I have nothing useful there. Okay. Don't so at this point, John, you're good. Good. So at this point, everyone wants to head off to court or we deliberate. Thank you. Are we going off the record? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Off the record. Um. Okay. We will now reconvene petition number 2023-0348 regarding 225 Louisiana Street in Buffalo, New York. Based upon the evidence and documentation presented, the board makes the following findings. Number one, this project is a renovation of a manufacturing building into 116 residences with commercial tenants. The residences are primarily on the upper floors with businesses on the ground floor. Number two. The building was built over time as nine individual buildings with an alley down the middle. A roof was put over the alley and the buildings were combined to a single building many years ago. The primary entrances into the building are at the north and south ends and lead directly into the alley. The alley is the primary circulation on the ground floor of the building. Number four, the petitioner is requesting a variance to allow additional storefront glazing in the alley with the following provisions. Automatic deluge sprinkler heads within four and 12 inches of each side of glass, six feet on center maximum. Fixed windows with tempered glass. Self closing tempered glass doors using a deluge sprinkler system on the storefronts, allowing to maintain the required life safety for egress while creating visual connections between the common hall and businesses. Number five. The building will be fully sprinklered as per the building code section 903.3.1.1 per NFBA 13 sprinkler systems. Number six, section 404.6 of the building code shall be accommodated and be in compliance with regarding sprinklers and gasketing of doors. Right. Uh, that the Department of State be authorized to sign and deliver a the state yeah. environmental. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the state environmental quality review act short environment environmental assessment form indicating that no or small impact may occur in response to the question in part two of the form and determining in part three of the form that the road action proposed action will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts b new york state department of state coastal management program coastal assessment form and c the certification of no significant coastal impact uh, at this point, we'd like to conduct that. Yeah, we get a brief. Get a motion. Yeah, I just I just Yeah, I just Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, at this point, we'll have a motion to approve. A motion that we approve. Mr. Andrews? I'll second it. Mr. Flynn? Yes. John Lyden is also in favor. The motion carries 4 to 0. This decision is limited to specific building and application before it and as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. The variance is approved. This hearing is now concluded. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we off? We're off. What is the, what is the separation? We will now convene for petition number 2023-0514, the aggrieved party T.Y. Lynn International Engineering and Architecture PC, Nature of Grievance and Relief Sought. The petition pertains to a proposed residential development known as the Villas at Brandon Woods, Section 2. The proposed development contains one two-unit building, four Three unit townhouse buildings and 21 four unit townhouse buildings that are of type 5B construction, two stories in height, and located in the town of Sweden, Monroe County, state of New York. Petitioner is seeking relief from 
19 NYCRR Part 1225, the 2020 Fire Code of New York State, Section D107.1, which states that developments of one or two family dwellings where the number of dwellings exceeds 30 shall be provided with two separate and approved fire apparatus access roads. Exceptions. Number one, construction of dwellings on premises which have had local site plan approval prior to January 1st, 2011, with no modification to approved site plan. Number sec the second exception, where there are more than 30 dwelling units on a single public or private fire apparatus access road, and all dwelling units are equipped throughout with an approved automatic sprinkler system in accordance with sections 903.3.1.1, and 903.3.1.2 or 903.3.1.3. Access from two directions shall not be required. The number of dwelling units on a single fire apparatus access road shall not be increased unless fire apparatus access roads will connect with future development as determined by the fire code official. The petitioner is seeking relief from the requirement that a second fire apparatus access road be provided, and if not provided, that the dwelling units be equipped with an automatic sprinkler system. So at this point, I guess I'll let you guys go ahead and present again. Um, thank you. My name is Rob Laviano. My partner is Steve Lutradello. Uh, thank you for seeing us again. Uh, we appreciate your time. Um, as you recall, we came before the board on December 20th of, of 2023, uh, asking for relief, as you as you mentioned. Um, the nature of our, uh, the basis of our uh, the relief was uh, based on uh, financial hardship, which are, of course, very real and, and, and very substantial at this point. Uh, but at that time, you had uh, given us some recommendations, uh, asked us to do a few things uh, before we had the conversation about economic hardship, uh, two major things uh, that you'd asked us to do that we took to heart and we, we've uh, since done. Uh, the first is we contacted the adjacent property uh, owners uh, that surround our site looking for a second means of access to our site. Do you want to show us where those people are that contacted us? Sure. We, we've engaged, a, uh, we engaged a, a broker that sent some certified letters and contacted some of the property owners by phone. Uh, for example, here at the end of the cul-de-sac, there are two houses on uh, Tel Telemore Trail that would provide a secondary means of access to our site. Uh, our broker did send them certified letters, contacted them by phone as well. Uh, they are not interested in either selling their property this time or otherwise assisting us in any way. Uh, we also sent, uh, he also sent letters to, uh, there's a property owner that's actually off the map here uh, that would connect into our our dead end stub road, uh, which would be extended someday when uh, we continue to develop the project, um, or, or for that matter, if anyone continues to develop this piece of land, they would come through our project. Um, and that piece of property is currently not for sale as well. Uh, there is another property owner on Shumway to our south, technically. Uh, there was a certified letter sent to them as well, and he'd received no response from them as well, so after multiple attempts. So we add tried to exhaust all of their means of, of uh, external egress to our site by contacting these property owners. And unfortunately, we couldn't achieve any favorable results after, after doing so. Uh, the second thing that we did, and based on a very important recommendation that was uh, provided, I think, by uh, you, Mr. Andrews, uh, uh, was we had looked at a way to connect our primary road coming into our site with the cul-de-sac. Uh, we engaged our engineer to, to do that, to um, to look at the technical specifications for that road. And we had uh, put together an application, an amended site plan application. We went before the planning board in the town of Sweden, um, asking for uh, amendment to our site plan so that we could install this road and provide uh, another means of access to all of the units up on that trail. Um, long story short, uh, our, our, um, our application was denied by the board. Did you do a public? Presentation to the board or just paperwork? Yes, no, it was actually in uh, three meetings. Uh, we went up with the board three times. It was uh, 
three separate meetings, one of which was a public hearing. So there were some neighbors that came as well, asked some questions, um, trying to understand what that was and if it impacted them in, in any way, which of course, given that it's internal to our site, it did not. Um, but so, after, tell, so tell us about the meetings and the, uh, the comments, the tenor, like, give us the scoop on how that all went. The basis for the denial. Yeah. Uh, well, the basis for the denial is a little bit puzzling to us. Certainly, we view this as something that's um, beneficial to our site. For the residents is certainly a safety feature that um, we saw no downside with. Um, it's uh, something that, of course, we would bear the cost of and, and do the work to put the road in. Uh, essentially, the planning board, my personal opinion, and having conversations both within the formal meetings and the informal conversations with the planning board members is that the planning board members want sprinklers up here on this call de sac. They want this project sprinklered um, and the access road that we provided, um, regardless of whether it makes sense, whether it fits the, you know, the, uh, uh, the bill and, and helps uh, provide uh, you know, another means of egress to these uh, challenges at the top uh, did not really come into play. So, so right now you have, you don't have sprinklers anywhere in the whole, all the way around and up the purple houses? Cor correct. The, the, correct. This, these purple houses, if you recall, was phase one. So those are already constructed. Okay. So there's, yeah. no, there's no sprinklers in the purple ones, but the board said that one sprinklers in the rest. Correct. Even if the code allows second easy egress to, to eliminate that. Correct. Does the planning board have jurisdiction over us? We don't believe so. No, and I'm sure I, I believe you'd agree, but no, it's, it's my understanding, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the town cannot be more restrictive than the state. Um, so they're, more, they're, they're, they're saying they want sprinklers to go, they would have to petition the state, get approval from the state in order to enact a stricter form of legislation, which uh, we're very confident that they, they have not done. So Who is that speaking? Steve, we chair double. Uh, David Flynn speaking. So just so we're all on the same page, in turn, if, if, if this board were to grant a variance to the relevant building code provisions, you may still have issues with the town and the planning board. Okay. Uh, so we, we can't direct the town planning board to approve a site plan. All we can say is that if we were to grant it, that you have a variance or any access road as uh, set forth in, in your presentation, and, and, and that based on that, a, a variance to the code has been granted, but that doesn't necessarily translate into the planning board greenlighting your project, because you would still need to modify your site plan as you have proposed. To show and include uh, if it were approved with this access road, and and then you'd have to look at your remedies relative to the planning board, which might be an article seventy eight against the planning board, saying that you know it's arbitrary and capricious and all that stuff. But just so you understand, our variance would just be that a variance to the code, and then it's you're still subject. To the to the planning board and any other municipal approvals. Andrew Cleaning, T Y Lynn, uh, here on their behalf. Uh, the applicants we have. I think we need to go back to why they actually came in front of the board. And I think we're we're speaking about that new access road that they're talking you're talking about now in red. The really they're seeking relief from not having one at all. That was their initial application due to the code. So I mean. Does, does the board stand now where that's not on the table for full relief from providing the second so, press access so road? You're, that's a correct statement. So if what's before us is really that there is nothing, uh, that the applicant isn't proposing anything, you're just asking uh, that there not be a secondary access and that the requirement for sprinkling be, be not enforced. That that's one approach. The other approach is that you're willing to proceed with a an access road like that. In which case, we we could grant a variance that says, with the construction of this road, uh, 
you know, what we would not, we would be willing to grant a variance as it relates to sprinkler rate to the extent it would still be required. Possibly there. So, um, I'll, I'll just speak out loud. So, is this red access road, additional access road? So, the additional access road allows no sprinkler per the code. Right. So, in a manner of speaking, when they put this in, do they meet the code period? And they wouldn't they need, need, they wouldn't need the variance. They wouldn't need the variance. So then we're we're appealing and rolling, or what do we do? Well, that, I mean that you have this in front of us with the you know showing this proposed access road. Um, if the town won't allow it, then you're asking for the what was originally the variance request. That is, no secondary access and no sprinkler rate. Yes, sir. Correct. Or we could grant the variance with that, or or say there's no variance required, right? And and you go back, and as David said, you would have to go for an Article 78 or somehow overrule the planning board because that state code that meets the state code. They don't care what you're saying. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand it. But that's that's. So how do we feel? So that meets. Well, system. first of all, what is the width of that road? Well, every, that's everything about this road. Yeah, right. Needs, needs to meet the meet right, right, incline exactly. and everything. Right, exactly. So, exactly. so I don't think we're prepared to grant this fire lane without knowing the details, exactly, the, exactly. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, in a manner of speaking, we're approving a concept. <laughs> Excuse me. The requirements of you know loading the seventy-five thousand pound to twenty foot. I mean, could that be? We already have um, a three buddies approval on that road from the highway superintendent oh. to the town engineer to the uh, fire, fire, fire department. Okay. Fire department visited the site and says, well, great Lyle. idea, we love it. Yeah, so I don't know why we have Lyle's. Yep, Lyle, who's on the call as well. He's trying to speak. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, Lyle. Lyle did you interrupt? Someone in the white speaking. <laughs> Andy. Andy this that. Steve, can you tell the court reporter your last name, please? Hey, uh, Lee Chardello, L I C C I A R D E L L O. Do you get that, Chelsea? Yes, I'll confirm it. Thank you. And Lyle, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. This is Lyle Sturk. I'm the fire marshal for the town of Sweden. And um, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I went through and read the um, draft for the last planning board meeting, um, just to make sure that I could understand what the um, what the planning board was was stating as well. And the issue that it seems that the planning board has is that if you look at that secondary road, it doesn't actually meet the code for a secondary access road because it just empties, it just makes a loop. So there's still only one means of egress in and out of that development. But there is, so from the intersecting road, when we're all those pink, I don't know if you see this. I plan, can't see that. The, the, where the existing buildings are, how many units are up to that point? 20. That's why they're purple. So, I didn't so there's less than 30 up to that point. So that's where your second means of egress comes in. Correct. So you're allowed 30 without sprinklers and without a second means of egress. And then they've made second means of egress for the over 30, the new, all the new units. Well, no, I understand that. I was just that's trying the, to explain. That's the way the boards, that's the way the boards interpreted it. Okay. I'm just trying to explain the way that the planning board interpreted it was For that me. it wouldn't meet the, um, the code. And that's why I suggested that we come back here and um, right. go through this system. So they could better understand how you guys interpret it. <laughs> Understood. Understood. So that's your feeling that if we would give them an interpretation as to her at least our feelings on it, that they might approve it? I, I would hope so, but I, I'm not gonna guarantee anything when it's a seven board member, <laughs> a seven so, member board, sorry. So devil's advocate, this guy here, 
he can go that way or he can go that way. Mm -hmm. However, when this guy gets to here, he can only go one way. Well, but unfortunately, the code allows a dead end road up not, to. Not for this guy. This guy here needs two ways, right? Right, right. He is. So, he, so he's, he's got one way and he's got two ways. Right. Oh, oh crap. Once he gets here, he's only got one way. I mean, I'm just being the devil's advocate. Right, to me, right. I mean, planning board is saying they they might be, but as, like I said, the, the way the code is interpreted, that you're allowed 30 units, and and, and because this is an existing situation, is plus plus they have that that uh, future development going the other way, which the code officials allowed to conclude as a second means of egress. So in a manner, and that's why we came up with this this okay. running. So we we kind of got. I think I just put forth a possible issue. So, right, to speak. Right, so right, before right. us today, we'll be making a ruling. And if it's favorable, it's based on existing conditions, period. Yeah. Not necessarily that this satisfies all building code spirit right, right, of the document, right, blah, right, blah, blah, blah. Right, We're going to say right. we think this is a right. for this situation. viable variance. Yes. Uh, the yes. So it essentially is a variance. Sure. Right. 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 So it essentially is a variance. Yes. I would say yes. Yeah. But I mean, we're the, the very, it's kind of an all or nothing variance, right? It's either we say you don't need the second means of egress and you don't need the sprinkler, or you don't need the variance because this secondary access where we is or or we're, or we're saying that we consider that a second means of egress under the conditions yes. of this site plan and that might get us out of the that's that's where it becomes circular because if we do consider that to be a second means of egress they don't need a variance no no we, we we're saying we're saying that it doesn't meet the total intent of the code but we feel that under these circumstances, right. this does give us a second means of egress for the, right. the new 30 or the 30. Okay. So we are granting a variance. There is a variance to that. If we, if we. Just, so, just so, go I, ahead, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, just so I can understand, um, because I know I'm going to be asked a lot of questions. If you issue the variance that that would meet the second um, means of egress, um, they would have to come back in front of the planning board and the planning board would still have to approve that because it's part of the site plan. And then if they don't approve it, then we have to go through the article 78 and all of that. I just want to make sure that I understand correctly. That's, about the, that's the only remedy. Our attorney is nodding. Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, if, if your beef is with the planning board, that's sort of your, your means of appeal is to uh, to do an article 78 we can grant a variance as Rick is laying out that basically would say this is a that we would view that what you proposed as a secondary means of access but that's that's as far as we can go we can't direct the planning board therefore to approve you know the site plan as amended and to, you know uh, Issue the building permits or whatever the next steps are. Okay. And what did what did you um, determine as far as the um, extending the project down the road? Have you, have you looked at it as a viable solution down the road, where that extends further? Does that sound like that might happen someday over there, Rick? Okay. Yes. Yes. Continuing the main drag. Have you considered that? Is that a question oh. for me? Yes, yes. I haven't considered that only because when I look at those things, I look at do they own the property and is it something that is possibly going in front of the planning board within the next year? And because they do not own that property and in the history of the town, it seems like those properties that you'd be looking for, those folks just don't want to sell or they want more money than anyone wants to pay. Um, I can't really think that way. Okay, that's legitimate. Thank you. Um, as far as the road itself, though, have you reviewed it for fire code and building code and it meets everything? Are they putting like gates on it? The proposed roads, so yes. They were going to put gates on both ends 
they'd be breakaway gates. Um, and it, it would be wide enough and they understand that they would have to design it to hold that, you know, the, the weight of a fire apparatus vehicle. So it would be paved? Right now they're saying it would be crushed gravel, but they'd have to put a lot of crushed gravel down to hold the vehicles. Um, I would prefer paved, but I understand how that can be an issue sometimes. Well, you could, I mean, they've got to plow and maintain it, so you could, you could ask for pavement, you know, you're, you as the code official. Could do like courteous favors. Yeah. That, that was actually at the request of the highway superintendent. He preferred it to be crushed gravel. We're open to either. Okay. We were open to either, and he said he specifically. So it does have to be gravel. maintained in the winter. Exactly. And uh, also the, have you considered um, swing gate, you know, like a, a triangular swing gate with a max lock on both ends? Yes, that would be okay as well. Yeah. Steve Lutrowski, we did all that and we literally had a great meeting with the town the Friday before, explaining to them that this was a great solution. And unfortunately, at the meeting, they just couldn't get their head wrapped around not having sprinklers. They said we would rather have the sprinklers than have the access road. So I, I have the belief that um, if you go back in front of the planning board, even with your variance, we're still going to end up with a long, drawn out Article 78. Um, right now, we're at a complete standstill with our construction because we can't go any farther until we have this decided. So it's going to cost us a significant amount of money. I don't know how long Article 78 takes in here. Six months, six six months, months yeah, yeah. Yeah. that year. That would be crippling. Well, it still costs. It still costs you money. I mean, we talked about the construction. If you remember yeah. the construction of these townhouses, you know, yeah. if you built them so that they're separate, you wouldn't need sprinklers. And I mean, maybe you should be thinking that way. I mean, I don't know. I'm mean, just throwing stuff out there. I mean, we can give you, yeah. you know, there's certain things that I'm, I'm dead against giving you a variance for nothing. I mean, I'm dead against that. I, mean, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I'm dead against that. So that's right off the table. So, I, you know, this is some type of a solution. I don't like the fact it's gravel. I think it should be paid because yeah. it has to be maintained. The, the theory with the grant with the paved road is they didn't want to become a skateboard park, you know, kids going yeah. down skateboards and stuff because it ends up being uh, more of a nuisance. And I think everybody's in agreement uh, that this is probably never going to get used, but it's one of those things right. that we just have to do to like check the box. Yeah, or make it look, make it a walkway or something. Yeah, they'd like to walk through dog now. Yeah, I'd love that they're, they're, they're going to walk with it, but again, I think we're just dealing with people that don't understand what we're here in front of the board. Or maybe those paver bricks that we speak of, yeah. those paver things. But we just don't want anyone in a situation where you, know, you guys grant us, you know, the relief. And then all of a sudden, the planning board says, no. Well, we, I mean, if you're looking for nothing, we, I'm dead against. Well, what if we um, just throw this at you? Just in discussion matters. What if you guys were to grant relief with the uh, recommendation that we reapply to the planning board, but make it not a contingent, put the, put the ball back on your court and say, listen, we're going to give you a variance. We want you to go back to the planning board and then rethink it. Okay. If they say no, Harm, you know, harm on them. Why, why do we care what they do after they hit the variance? That's nothing to do with us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not our problem. Yeah, we, but they're making it sound like they want sprinklers, and they're trying to be more restrictive in the state code. Which, oh, without a doubt. Which, right. without a doubt, and that's that's wrong. We're here for the variance. I mean, it's we're here for you guys to see that that we're being treated unfairly because we've done exactly what this board asked us to do. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot control. Of we don't have any control over local boards. Or, but you have control on giving us a variance. Yes. Right? So that's what we're here for. Yeah, I guess you, you can go back and say, we got the variance. Yeah. And I'm say, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to say, but well, yeah. they're not going to be happy with you guys, but you know, we're not. And at that point, they might say, well, then in that case, maybe we do think the road's okay. At least then they'll get some, you know, we can yeah, then, they, then they, we were in more position to work together with them. So look, the so. Uh, responsibility is off their back. Right. I don't know, talk to the state, I mean, talk to Albany. Those back board approved it. We don't care. Okay. So they're, let them get sued if something happens. You know, I don't know. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, that is a good point that you're bringing up because um, Lyle did consider granting this uh, succession, but after speaking to the town uh, attorney, he was saying they would rather not the town take the liability to as they wanted to come from the state level. So Lyle doesn't object to the variance. He just doesn't want to be the person that says, you know, let's go ahead and, uh, and grant this relief because they don't want the town to be liable. Yeah. Am I correct, Lyle, by saying that? Definitely the town. I, I, the town does not wish to be liable. Um, the the access road that um, has been brought in front of us, I do not have an issue with. Much like the other individual, I would prefer that it's paved. Um, 
I think that the issues with the paving are somewhat that the, the you know, like, like you said, the skateboarders, and I think also the, the town would not want to maintain it themselves. And I think that's a concern that the town might have, but I don't this know that a, for a fact. Is this a private roadway? This whole thing's private, right? Yes, sir. So you're no, the or the, the, the access no it, it's, it's not, it's not a private roadway. All the all the main roads are all public. Public, correct. So that would have to be maintained by the association or yes, whatever. We we very we've gone very far with this. Uh, Steve, we should all speak. If we have a management agreement, a maintenance agreement, agreement in order, if we have specs, details. I mean, this was all signed, sealed, ready to go. We thought this was a slam dunk. Yeah, but moving this forward, and we went. Even Lyle suggested that this gravel road, fit, you know, the need after talking to you guys, and we really thought we had something. I mean, we left here going, you guys are awesome. You guys gave us some direction on what to do. Just to go to three meetings to get denied is very, very frustrating. I know it's hard for some people to put themselves in that position, but we go home as, as contractors and we don't sleep after meetings like that. We're like, what happened? You know, here we got a meeting on Friday with the uh, attorney and attorney. Yeah, it's a good idea. We, we see the benefit of this. Yeah, we like it. And we're saying, listen, we're not asking for anything to do with sprinklers. All we're asking for is an, uh, the, the, uh, the, ability. the ability to put the access road in. That's all we're looking for is the opportunity. We're still willing to go to the state, you know, for the variance. Yeah, okay, we understand that. Then we go back to the meeting on Monday, and it's like, no, we want sprinklers. Excuse me? We want sprinklers. The one comment was, Put the sprinklers in first and then come back to the access road. Excuse me? Yeah, you don't need the access road. Yeah, you think? Right. So we're frustrated. I mean, we're, we're asking for your relief because we feel like you guys are an open board that can understand that we are, we have a hardship here. I mean, this is not self created. We didn't create this hardship. We bought the last section in a, in a, in a property. It's something that we inherited. You know, so that's how come these boards are created to give some sort of relief to situations like this. Okay, anything else on the board? You guys want to conclude anything? No. Okay, at this point, if you guys can head out in the corridor, we'll deliberate. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm ready. We are now reconvening. For petition number 2023-0514, based upon the evidence and documentation presented, the board makes the following findings. The subject of this petition pertains to a two-phase residential development known as the Villas at Brandon Woods that will contain greater than 30 dwelling units on a single fire, ac fire apparatus access road. Number two. The site plans for the first phase, section one of the development, were approved for construction by the Town of Sweden Planning Board Chairman in October 2007 and required compliance with the 2007 Fire Code of New York State. Number three, the site plans for the second phase, section two of the development, were approved for construction by the Town of Sweden Planning Board Chairman in August 2021 and requires compliance with the 2020 Fire Code of New York State. Number four, the 2020 Fire Code of New York State, Section D 107.1, requires that one or two family developments where the number of dwelling units exceed 30 be provided with a second approved fire apparatus access road, unless one of the exceptions within Section D 107.1 are satisfied. Number five, during the review of section two of the development, the fire marshal of the town of Sweden advised the developer that the installation of a second approved fire apparatus access road would be necessary to comply with the requirements of the 2020 fire code of New York state, section D 107.1. Number six, exception one of D 107.1 of the 2020 fire code of New York state allows for the construction of dwellings on a single fire apparatus access road if the local site plan approval was prior to January 1st, 2011, and contained no modifications to the approved site plan after that date. However, the site plans were approved in 2021, and this exception is not applicable. Number seven, the fire marshal of the town of Sweden advised the developer that they would support the elimination of the second fire apparatus access road if the dwelling units that exceeded 30 were equipped with an automatic sprinkler system 
as permitted by the 2020 Fire Code of New York State, Section D107.1, Exception 2. Number eight, exception three of the 2020 Fire Code of New York State states that the number of dwelling units on a single fire apparatus access road shall not be increased unless the fire apparatus access roads will continue with future development as determined by the Fire Code official. Number nine, the petitioner has indicated that there is no plan for the proposed fire apparatus access road to connect with future development in the future and the existing parcel does not have sufficient frontage to allow for a remote secondary access point. Number 10, the fire marshal of the town of Sweden has consulted in this matter and does support the granting of a variance under 19 NYCRR part 1205 with the newly proposed fire access road. Number 12, number 11, the secondary fire access road shall be a private road for phase two, and it shall be installed and maintained and built in accordance with the fire code as shown on the presented drawings. At this point, we have a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. And a second. I'll second. At this point, we'll conduct a vote. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Penny? Yes. Mr. Clayman? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. John Lighton is also in favor. The vote carries by a 5 to 0 margin. This decision is limited to the specific building and applications before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. The hearing is now concluded. Thank you. Thank you. So are you ready for your other round of questions? So I don't know if we should entertain questions or is that our vote of hand? I have a question real quick. Rob, did you say your name was Rob? What, I mean, can you spell your last name? Uh, you John Lydon. Oh no, the um petitioner's over there. Oh, Rob. Yes, you. Hey, yeah. Last name is uh, Laviano. L A V, like Victor. I A N O. Laviano. L A V. B I A N O. Okay. John. Right. All right, and, and it was Rob R O B. All right, great. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, this is your okay. Are we going off the record? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You want to take a